Hi all, welcome to Sitza.com. Now in this video we will learn about the vapor pressure of a pure liquid. What is the vapor pressure and what are the factors on which the vapor pressure of a liquid depends? We know if we have a liquid and in the liquid state the constant particles actually they are you know in a constant motion they are moving with the different velocities and if you suppose a slightly heat a liquid like suppose we got here the water right suppose this is my water and or any other you know liquid and if you heat it slightly and you maintain a particular temperature let's say you heat it up to you know 40 degrees celsius and you keep the temperature of the water at the 40 degrees celsius so what happens at any particular temperature you know some of the liquid molecules they will gain energy, they will gain the kinetic energy and they will, you know, enter into the vapor state. And if the vessel is open, you know, the vapors will go into the atmosphere. But if you close the vessel, right, if you have a closed vessel, then all the vapors, right, all, all the vapor molecules will remain above the surface of this liquid. And in the vapor phase, these molecules, you know, they are, we know that, uh, gas molecule is in a random motion and it can move in all possible directions, right? So the same gaseous molecule it can strike it can collide with the liquid surface and By doing so it will lose energy and therefore it will enter into the liquid state Correct. So that means at the surface of a liquid there are actually two processes going on one is changing the liquid into the vapor state which is called as an evaporation and the second thing is the gaseous state the vapor state will change into the liquid state right so that is what we call as a condensation so in a closed vessel two processes are going on at the surface of a liquid one is evaporation the other one is condensation initially the rate of evaporation is you know quite high and the condensation will be less because we have very less amount of vapors but with time what happens you know when the concentration of the vapors increase the condensation will also increase so a point will reach when both rates are same correct that's what we call as a equilibrium state so basically at equilibrium the rate of evaporation and the rate of condensation both are same right now at the equilibrium state the pressure which is exerted by these vapor molecules right the pressure exerted by these vapor molecules on the surface of a liquid is called as a vapor pressure right so the vapor pressure is the pressure which is exerted by the vapor phase molecules at equilibrium state correct so as I said here initially the rate of evaporation is high and the rate of condensation is less so that means if you plot a graph here between the rate of the reaction rate of suppose here evaporation or the condensation versus time so for the evaporation initially the rate of evaporation will be high right you know once once you close the, you know the vessel if a rate of evaporation will be high but with time it will decrease so the graph for the rate of evaporation will decrease like this so this is the graph for the rate of evaporation right at the same time rate of condensation will increase initially you know when you don't have any vapors so you can say almost the rate of uh, condensation is zero but with time when the concentration of the vapors you know increases there therefore the rate of condensation will also increase more and more liquid warm you know uh, vapor molecules will change into the liquid state so that means the rate of condensation will increase right so this is the graph for the condensation evaporation decreases condensation increases at point a point will reach when both rates will be same and now this is the time at which you get the equilibrium state correct so here you get an equilibrium state and this is the time taken by the system to reach to the equilibrium state here now at this point rate of evaporation and the condensation both the same right that means the vapor phase molecules you know the concentration of the vapor will remain constant right it will not increase or decrease because uh, you know the same number of molecules change from liquid state to the gaseous state and you know 
and the same number of molecules change from gaseous state to the liquid state. Now the question is, what are the factors that affect the, you know, the vapor pressure of a liquid? So there are two main important factors. Number one is called the temperature. The second one is the nature of a liquid. As we know that if you increase the temperature of any liquid here, suppose you got the water, right? Suppose this is our water and if you maintain a temperature of suppose 20 degrees Celsius here, so there will be some vapor molecules above the surface of a liquid and these vapors will exert some pressure which is called as a vapor pressure. Now if you increase the temperature, right? Suppose if you increase the temperature from 20 to 30 degrees Celsius, by increasing temperature more uh, you know, a liquid molecules will enter into the vapor state. They will gain the kinetic energy and it will enter into the vapor state. And after some time, again, you will see, a, you know, equilibrium will be re-established. But the vapor pressure at the high temperature will be more because at a high temperature, you have more vapor molecules. You have, you know, more uh, gaseous molecules there above the surface of a liquid. So the pressure exerted by these vapors will be more, correct? So that means if you plot a graph here, between the vapor pressure of any particular liquid versus temperature, you know, it shows like this. Which means that if you increase the temperature, vapor pressure of, also, you know, of the liquid also increases. So for the same liquid, vapor pressure will be different at different temperatures, right? Second thing is, the second factor on which the vapor pressure depends is the nature of a liquid. By nature of a liquid, I mean actually the intermolecular forces of attraction, right? Intermolecular force of attraction, right? Intermolecular force of attraction. If the intermolecular force of attraction is strong, suppose you have the liquid state and the more two, you know, liquid molecules are held together very strongly, right? So the force of attraction between the molecules is very strong. So that means you need a lot of energy to convert the liquid into the vapor state, right? But if the intermolecular force of attraction is weak, very less amount of energy is, you know, used to convert the liquid into vapor state. So therefore the, you know, for such a liquid, the vapor pressure will be more, right? So that means if the intermolecular force of, att of attraction is a strong, less number of vapors will be there, which means that the vapor pressure will be less, correct? So by nature of a liquid, we mean intermolecular force of attraction. That means we can say the vapor pressure of any liquid is inversely proportional to the force of attraction, right? Force of attraction between the molecules. If the force of attraction is strong, vapor pressure will be less. So that's why you will see the different graphs for the different substances. Suppose here you got ether, diethyl ether, a stone, water. So at any particular temperature, you can just check what is suppose at this particular temperature, what is the vapor pressure of a water? It's about this much, right? And what is the vapor pressure of the acetone? It's much higher, correct? It means that the force of attraction in the water is strong than the acetone. And diethyl ether, the vapor pressure is pretty high, which means that the force of attraction in the diethyl ether is very weak. Hope you got the concept. Thanks for watching the video. Bye for now.